Whoa, welcome to lesson one, find five. This is all about rotations, all right? Now, before we go into this lesson about rotations, there's three key vocabulary words that you're going to need to know, backwards and forwards. You need these words, or else this is going to be making no sense to you, all right? And those three words are as follows. You need to know what a center of rotation is, direction, and angle of rotation is, all right? We need to discuss these things. We have to have a little sit down right now and discuss what these three things are, okay? Let's break it down. So to do a rotation, you need to know these three elements. The first thing you need to know to do a rotation is where the center of rotation is. Now the center of rotation is the point that an object rotates around, okay? So to rotate something, you need to have the point that it rotates around. I mean, if you think like a wheel on a car, it rotates around the middle part, right? So you always have to rotate around something. This one, if you look in this example, what are we rotating around? We are rotating around point A. So our center of rotation is point A. And just so you know, let's put a little parentheses, the center of rotation is always a point. It's always going to be a point. Always a point that you rotate around. Okay, so that's the point we rotate around, our center of rotation. All right, that's the first thing about rotation you need to know. The second thing is you always need a direction, all right? There's two directions you could rotate things, only two. You could rotate something clockwise or counterclockwise. Now, you might know this, you might not, but I figure I'll help you out. Counterclockwise means you spin to the left, so it's in this direction. This would be a counterclockwise rotation. This is the opposite way that a clock spins, all right? So you rotate it to the left. So if I just took my pen, I would say this way rotation, that's a, that's a counterclockwise rotation. A clockwise rotation, on the other hand, goes in this direction. It goes to the right. So that is a clockwise. That is the direction that a clock goes in. And it goes in this direction, to the right. Now, it's good to know this because if you ever describe a rotation, you're going to need a center dilation, and you're also going to have to say what direction is going in. Is it going counterclockwise or clockwise? And then finally, all rotations have an amount of degrees that you're rotating something. Now, you can do any amount of degrees from 0 to infinity. Go 1 degree, 2 degrees, 3 degrees. But the main ones we're going to be talking about for now are 90, 180, and 270. All right? So your angle of rotation is how much you spin it. All right? It's how much you spin. How many, many degrees you spin an object. And let's see what that looks like. Well, if this is our original arrow, a 90 degree rotation of this would be one turn. So if you look, I turn my arrow once, that is a 90 degree rotation. So this is one turn. All right, one turn. See, I just turned it once to the left. Now, 180 degrees means you completely reverse. So right now it's pointing up. If I did two turns, one, two, so it's pointing in the opposite direction, that is 180 degrees. So, like, if someone says, like, oh, that person did a 180 on you, that means, like, they totally changed their opinion on you. Like, oh, that person was so cool, and then he did a 180 on me, and he's, like, a total jerk now. Yeah, that's like that, a 180, that's what it is. Now, 270 is three turns, so it goes one two, three turns, and that would be a rotation of 270 degrees, three turns, okay? So just get used to what that looks like, one turn, two turns, and three turns, all right? That is 90, 180, 270. Like I said, there's other amount of degrees you can do it, we're sticking with these. All right, let's try and practice this. Let's see if you can actually use these three things, okay? I'm about to do a rotation, and I want you to state the center of rotation, the direction, and the angle of rotation of this, okay? I'm going to tell you when to pause the video, do it by yourself, all right? So let's rotate this, this triangle, okay? And I want you to say the center of rotation, where is it rotating around, the direction I go in, and the angle of rotation. So how many degrees does this turn, all right? So let's observe it, all right? Here we go, here we go. We're rotating, 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 and we are done. Okay. Okay. So, let's see here. So let's see if we can figure this out. First, what was our center of rotation? Where were we rotating around? Well, 
if you saw this right, I know this is upside down, our center of rotation was point A. Right? And remember, it's always a point. Now, the direction I went in, I'll do it again. We started here. And if you see, I'm going to the left. If you look on your paper, a leftward turn would be a counterclockwise rotation. So that is counterclockwise. Now, instead of writing that out every single time, I'm going to be using CC. C, C dot C. Okay? That means counterclockwise from this point forward. So counterclockwise, I'm also just going to say CC. In the angle of rotation, well, once again, let's just look at this. How many times did I turn it? I turned it once, and then I turned it twice. And you'll see now it's in the opposite direction, so that is a 180-degree rotation. All right. See? That is 180 degrees. All right? And if you can do these three things, find the center of rotation, which direction, and the angle of rotation, you're going to be good for this lesson. So actually, let's practice this. All right? We want to describe a transformation that maps ABC onto triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. All right. So somehow I got to map these things. I got to map A onto A prime, B onto B prime, and C onto C prime. Well, let's see. Where am I going to have to rotate this? If you look here, I'm going to have to rotate it to the right. I can rotate it like this and get it to map onto each other. Okay. So I got to figure out three things. What's my center of rotation, my direction, and angle of rotation? So instead of rotating it first, let's make a prediction. All right, let's try it and see if it works. So our center of rotation is C, right? If I rotate this around C, that's a good place. I don't want to rotate around B because that's going to, that would be so, why would I rotate around B? I'm going to rotate around point C. In this case, I'm going in this direction. I'm going to the right. So that is a clockwise rotation. Clockwise rotation. And the angle of rotation is, it looks like I have to turn it once. So that's going to be a 90 degrees, okay, 90 degree rotation. So let's try this, all right? I'm going to try rotating and see if I mapped it onto each other. So I'm rotating it, I'm rotating it clockwise. So I'm rotating around point C. It's going clockwise, and I went 9 degrees one turn, and I know I just shifted a little, but yes, it maps onto each other. I did it. A onto A prime, B onto B prime, and C onto C prime. So let's actually write out what transformation just occurred. This was a rotation, okay, of 90 degrees clockwise. Clockwise, I just put clockwise. A rotation of 90 degrees clockwise centered at point C, maps triangle ABC onto triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. And you'll see here I used all three pieces of information to describe this. How many degrees, the direction, and around what point? Always has to be there, all three. Let's try this again, okay? So we're going to describe a transformation that maps triangle ABZ onto triangle YXZ. All right, so I'm trying to map point A onto Y, B onto X, and Z onto Z. All right, so what, how am I going to do this? Well, I think I could use a rotation here, all right, if I rotated it. But there's three things I need to know, right? I need to know the center of rotation, the direction I'm going in, and the angle of rotation. Let's see, my center is going to be at Z. Let's rotate around point Z. So point Z is our center of rotation. Okay, that's where I want to rotate around. The direction, well, I could go either direction. I could always either go in either direction. But let's say let's go this direction, okay? We're going to the left, and so that's going to be counterclockwise. Could I go the other way? Sure. I just felt like going like that. It came from my heart. And how many turns am I going to do? How many degrees? Well, it looks like I'm going to have to go down one, two times. And you see how they're reversed of each other? So this is going to be an angle of rotation of 180 degrees. So let's test this out. Let's see if this works. All right, so I'm going to rotate this around Z. I'm rotating around Z, and I'm going to the left. All right, so I'm counterclockwising it. All right, and I go one turn. That's not enough. And now two turns. And look. Oh, man, i got to get better at this. And they are mapped onto each other. Beautiful. All right, so now we have to describe it. And remember, we're just going to use this template right here. All right, so we have to put a rotation of 
180 degrees. So I put the degrees. Now let's put the direction counterclockwise around point Z or centered at, whichever way you want to put it, centered at maps triangle ABZ onto triangle YXZ. All right, and let's try one more. I'm going to describe a sequence of transformations that would map rectangle WZY onto rectangle PONM. All right, so we're going to need two, right? We can't just rotate this, because if I just rotated this guy, it wouldn't rotate onto it. So I have to do two things. I'm going to have to do a translation first, and then a rotation. So first, let's pick where we're going to, what we're going to map onto what, all right? Now, what I'd like to do is get these so they line up. So I'm going to pick z, putting Z onto N, all right? And that does match up, so that's okay. Z maps onto N. So let's translate along ZN. All right, and I'll even do that. So moving along ZN, boom. Now Z is on top of N. Let's, let's move our points over. Come on over, guys. Okay. So we started with a translation along ZN. Okay. Now we're going to do our rotation. And if you look here, I, if I rotated it, not to the right, so that's clockwise, okay, around point N or point Z, doesn't matter which one you pick, 90 degrees, that's one turn. So let's just write down that three pieces of information. We're going to use point N as our center of rotation. We want to go to the right, so we're going to go clockwise. And I'm just putting these notes. You see, in the beginning of this lesson, we provided that for you. Now, that's gone. you got to do it on your own. And I'm going to go 90 degrees, so one turn. Okay, so let's write our second point. So first we did a translation along Zn, and now we're going to do a rotation of 90 degrees clockwise centered at point N would map. W, X, Z, Y onto rectangle P, O, N, N. We did it. Look at that. So first a translation, then a rotation. All right. Great work. All right. Now let's move into some rules, okay? So now we're going to do these on the coordinate plane. You saw we we're doing rotations off the coordinate plane. Now we're doing it on. And really, it's just memorizing rules to do this, okay? First thing we're going to do is rotate triangle A, B, C 90 degrees counterclockwise around the origin. All right, state the coordinates of A, B, C, and A prime, B prime, C prime. So our center of rotation is the origin, and we're going 90 degrees counterclockwise. The rule for a 90 degree rotation around the origin is just this. You switch to the X and Y. You see how they're switched? You take X and Y, you switch X and Y, switch X and Y, and then you change the sign of Y. Change sign of why do I keep writing sing? Sign of y. So our rule is negative y, x. So first, let's write down our coordinates of our preimage. A is at 2, 4. B is at 2, 1. And C is at 7, 1. All right? So let's just apply our rule now. We're going to switch them and change the value of y. So let's, it's 2, positive 4. It's going to be negative 4 because it's negative y, 2. All right? x stays the same. So now I'm going to do the same thing. y comes first, and I'm going to make it negative. Negative 1, 2. And for our last one, it's negative 1, and the x goes to the back 7. So let's graph these three points. So a prime is negative 4, 2. That's our a prime. Our B prime is negative 1, 2. That's our B prime. And our C prime is negative 1, 7. That's all the way up here. That's our C prime. So our triangle would look like this after our rotation. And that makes sense. Doesn't that look like I rotated 90 degrees? 
clockwise. So that's one turn over there. Let's do a 180 rotation. All right. So we're going to rotate triangle DEF counterclockwise around the origin. State the coordinates of triangle DEF and D prime, E prime, F prime. All right. Now the rule for 180 degree rotation around the origin is just this. You take the x and y stay in the same position, but you change the sign of x and you change the sign of y. So change sign of x and y coordinate. Okay, so let's give this a shot. Let's write down our coordinates. So our coordinate is negative 2, negative 2 for d. Our f coordinate is negative 2, negative 7. Oh, that's our, sorry, putting it in the wrong place. And our E coordinate is negative 5, negative 7. Okay? So if you read here, it just says change the sign of X and Y coordinates. It's negative X, negative Y. So I'm going to change both sides. So if this is negative, negative, well, now they change. I'm going to change both sides. So it's going to be positive 2, positive 2. This is negative 5, negative 7. I'm going to change both sides. It's 5, 7. And negative 2, negative 7, I'm going to change both of these sides. That's 2, 7. So now I'm going to do my new points. 2, 2 is my D prime. 5, 7 is my E prime. And 2, 7 is my F prime. And that is my image. And if you look here, that is two turns. All right, so that's 180 degrees around the origin, counterclockwise. Okay, moving on. Now we're going to rotate triangle HTP counterclockwise around the origin. State the coordinates of triangle HTP and H prime, T prime, at P prime. Now we're going to try a little differently. This time I'm just going to tell you what the rule is, and you can try it to apply it and see if you get the right answer. So for this one, you're going to switch them again. So you're going to switch X and Y. Switch X and Y, and then change the sign of X. See how it's changed there? So I'm going to write down the coordinates. Let's see. So H is 9, negative 2. T is 4, negative 2. And P is 9, negative 5. All right? Try using this rule and see if you can put the coordinates there yourself. Pause the video. I said pause the video. If you did it correctly, these should be your new points. All right? You should have got negative 2, negative 9. So I put the x first. So I put my y in front, right? So my y was negative 2. I put that in front. And then I put my x in the back, and I changed the sign. That became negative 9. For t, I put my negative 2 in front. See how that went to the front? That's my y. And then my 4 went to the back, and I changed the sign. And the same for the last. All right? So I changed them, and I changed the sign. If you graph these, you should get negative 2, negative 9. Okay, that's our h prime. t is negative 2, negative 4. That's our t prime. And your p prime is negative 5, negative 9. Right over here. And if you look at that, that is three turns around the origin going to the left, so it's counterclockwise. This is the longest video I've ever recorded. Congrats to sitting through it. Congrats to me for recording it. Go tell your mama you love her. And be good.